<laughs> Hi, Brett. <laughs> we just watched uh, the video of the beginning of your painting. Fabulous. Now, what is really interesting is that you changed the name. Of your, um, Catherine told us you were going to call it the New Jerusalem. However, you've changed the name to Dancing into the New Jer Jerusalem. Dance, yeah. Bottom line is, we are going to pick up Yahweh's birthday present. Leaving tomorrow, we're going to be on an airplane and going down to Melbourne and bringing back the ute. Now, we are getting the signs that we are out of here. A uh, fatal car accident on the way back would be appropriate. Been there, done that with, mm. with Yah. But it's the end of the prophecy. Yah has always said he'll not go past 69. And, and uh, what it means is that, as a matter of fact, all the numbers today were appointed to death. Now, we will be dancing into the New Jerusalem. <laughs> However, it does mean that we'll be coming back. This is where it kicks it up a notch. Uh, God comes back in his power and glory and leading saints. So, all things being equal, don't worry. It's all good for the good. Look after Catherine and uh, look forward to hearing about us and knowing the crap, breathing fire when we get back. Yes, yeah, so I've um, always said that I'm only going to go so far. And it's 70 Hebrew years is uh, 69 uh, Gregorian calendar years. And uh, it's been um, becoming more and more uh, obvious as the days roll on. And the, we've done hundreds of uh, um, mathematical calculations and stars and so forth. And it all spells destruction. Mm. So the Earth itself has reached that Sodom and Gomorrah stage, and um, we've only got a handful of followers, as you know. And uh, you're all saints for that. But as far as everyone else is concerned, um, I'm only here for the children, and um, uh, coming in the clouds might be appropriate. But we've also got to fulfill the prophecy of uh, the rejoicing of the saints in heaven as we get back. So I've been there before uh, when I was, uh, well, it was the uh, 15th of uh, February 1978 when I crossed that, crashed that logging trip. Now, today we took the um, our car in to fuel up because we're going to the airport tomorrow, which is just under 300 kilometres. And um, I was talking to this fellow and uh, his buddy, who was also fueling up. And uh, for some reason or other, I started telling him about the time I crashed the truck. And uh, I can't recall why I even started talking about it. And uh, he said, oh, he'd had a near-death experience like that. He said he went into the light and um, after he crashed his car, After he crashed his car were killed, into a pole, including his body, was dead. He was sitting on top of the pole. This is like a hydro pole, and looking down on the uh, medics pulling the three dead bodies out of the car. So then he goes up through the light, and um, <clears throat> he's greeted by his mother, and she said, "It's not time for you to come yet." They're not. Uh, the words were that. Uh, we're not ready for you yet. We're not yeah, ready for you yet. That, that's interesting. Yeah, what's well, interesting what I'm saying. For us, yeah. And then he came back down. Now, he was showing me the scars on his uh, wrists. Uh, both wrists were smashed. His uh, ribs were smashed and uh, several other serious injuries where normally would kill you. Anyhow, um, so that was fine. Um, so uh, he said he's from Victoria, and that's how the conversation started, because we was living in Victoria with the license plates from Victoria. And um, we got yanking back and forwards, and this delta led into it. But he'd been up here for two years, and uh, he was a mobile mechanic, does uh, the gas uh, conversion uh, tune-ups, and um, he decided he was going to stay two years ago. 
Now, as it turns out, um, we live at uh, 103. Um, and he's got a job. He's starting tomorrow at 101, the next door neighbour. So it's the neighbour over there, looking at their house now with the yappy dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the um, other fellow who was there with him, um, I said that we were going down to pick up this uh, car. And the other fellow said, oh, well, I've got one of those. He said, same year model, 1966. 1996. 1996, right. Mm. And uh, he said he's, he found it under a mango tree and he bought it for a thousand bucks. And just sitting there all... Uh, dilapidated. Dilapidated. So he stripped it and rebuilt it just like this other thing we're buying. Mm. And um, he said it was, uh, what, black pearl? Black pearl, yes. Beautiful colour. Mm. It's like a black and with a, uh, well, you'd know what it is, um, metallic sheen through it. Now, they just live around the corner from mm. us. And he told us the address. They, they lived in 19 and 35 with the number of the street around the corner from us. So, of course, we know it's all about the numbers. When we come home to look up 1935, it means appointed unto death. <laughs> so the whole meeting was a, a, a message. We've been expecting this, if you like. Um, when I first found Yah in 2008, I, um, he asked me then when we're in New Guinea, are, are you ready? <laughs> like to go. <laughs> if, you want, if, if you want to go anywhere and, and have the angels catch you up, jump off a cliff, something like that. Well, yeah, that's right. See, New Guinea is a place, if they're going to kill you, that's a perfect place to do it. Yeah. However, he, uh, I, I said, yep, <laughs> any time you are, just don't leave me behind, which was Martha all over again. And um, so it seems that now is the time. The Yahweh cannot do any more than he has already done to reveal God on the earth. And of course, the prophecy is that he is entirely rejected. So it uh, would seem that only something spectacular is going to save the meek, those that will be saved, the rest will be utterly destroyed. And well, it's all about being here for the children, which I've said mm. all along. Yeah. And um, we're going down to see my grandkids and uh, also uh, my niece, who was the only one I got time for, and she believes, and she's got three children. Mm. Three little girls. And then uh, her husband, which is uh, descended from the King of Morocco. Uh, we had arranged, well, what had happened was uh, I hadn't seen her since she was a child. So when I was up in Sydney after I come back from Canada in 1996, she shows up from London and she tells me that um, she had fallen in love with uh, Jaime and um, they had gone back into Morocco taking drugs in from Amsterdam of all places and um, got arrested at the airport. He took the rap and she um, then flew back to London and then from London to Australia. So he gets taken to jail and they throw him in, a, in the bin there and uh, while he was in the bin, um, an angel appeared to him and took him up into the heavens and told him that he had to marry uh, my niece Michelle, because she is the niece of Christ. Now he's a Muslim, he doesn't know nothing about all that kind of stuff. So she's telling me the story up at the Catholic club and we're sitting there having a meal. And I said, well, do you love him? She said, yeah. I said, well, let's, let's uh, see if we can do something. So she said, well, he's locked up. Right. So we walk outside and there's this payphone and I said, where was the last place you were together? And he, she said, well, we were staying in a boarding house owned by a Jewess in London. And uh, I said, well, you got a number? She said, yeah, and she had a calling card. And uh, the miracle there is that a bloody phone that works you can find outside in the public domain because they get the, the kids just uh, kick the shit out of them, right? So this thing was like brand new and we're standing there in the rain and uh, she calls 
And this Jewish lady answers, and uh, she asked, had she seen uh, Jaime? Just as that happened, he walks in the door, and this got them reunited. And he said that he had got out of jail and um, was allowed to get back into England. Like, here, if you've got a criminal record, you can't get in, right? Especially if you're a Muslim. And uh, he said he was followed around the city and he was going from uh, place to place where they had been together. And finally, he went to this uh, uh, lodging house and uh, walked in and there, we're on the phone. Now out of that came three lovely children. And these children I'm going down to see, plus my niece and my me, uh, in Melbourne because we're going down to pick up this uh, utility. And uh, utility, as you've seen already, it looks like a... Well, there were some cars they made in America, um, which I forget the name of them now. But uh, most uh, pickup trucks are not like these. These are a long, lowered, drawn-out, beautiful-looking thing, which you've seen the photographs of. So that's what we're picking up. However, the um, indications are that uh, we're going to snuff it on the way back, which is fine because I, I uh, don't intend to go any further with this bullshit here on the earth. And um, so if we, uh, if you don't hear from us for a little while, we'll keep looking up. It really is all good. It's all good. Um, as far as uh, I'm concerned when I crashed my logging truck in 1978 on uh, February the 15th. Um, the word for uh, ghost is found 108 times. And as Jesus, I lived one, two, three, four, five days, which is a perfect number. So you add that to the 108 and call it all days, and that's the date I, I crashed the logging truck. And uh, it was up into the light, reminded who I am, oh Lord. And uh, back I come because there's no one else can do it except me. Now the Julian day on that day when this happened was 555, which is the word Christ. That's how many times the word Christ is found in the New Testament in 522 verses. And 522 is, is uh, mother, the mother measure, the Cuban. So you could say that um, my task was to locate the mother down here on earth and uh, get it all together, do what I these miracles I've been doing for years don't make no damn difference. Mm. It is amazing to me how stupid people are. So, uh, looks like we're out of here and uh, back shortly. In power, breathing fire. So you better keep on working on that painting, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, if we make it back without any, then that's all good too. Just means that. So we're just telling all our saints, and uh, there's another prophecy: is that uh, uh, the two end time witnesses, which of course we are, laid dead for three days, and uh, they all rejoiced over it. So I've already told them the sad will be on the road coming back, mm. and uh, keep looking out for it. Maybe a truck or whatever you like. Make it good, mm. and uh, do your best. Well, a couple of sniper bullets through there. <clears throat> That'd be cool. Clean, as far as the body is concerned. Right? Sniper bullets through there. Yeah. Let, let me handle it, all right? <laughs> so, hasta la vista, baby. Okay. And pass this on to Catherine. Yes, yeah. Love your work, love the painting, love you. And uh, we'll see you later. Yeah. Alligators. Look after each other. Right. <laughs> Bye.